In this online lecture, we're going to talk about the relationships between Ka, Pka acids and bases. And what we're going to see here, our first key point is number one, the higher the Ka, the stronger the acid. The lower the Ka, the weaker the acid. We're also going to see here number two, the lower the Pka, the stronger the acid, the higher the Pka, the weaker the acid. And it's very important we know number three, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base, and vice versa, the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. Now, let's not just memorize these things. Let's really understand what's happening here. What we have here is a generic acid-base reaction. And notice here, like a lot of acid-base reactions, this particular reaction is reversible. And remember, we learned in general chemistry is that if a reaction is reversible, you could generate his KEQ, or equilibrium constant. And let me remind you how that works. You basically take the products of the reaction right here in green and divide them by the reactants, in this case, HA. Notice all these species are aqueous, so we would plug in concentrations into this equation. But if you remember correctly, in KEQ, you could only put aqueous and gases. This is why, for instance, we're not putting water into this equation, because water is in liquid form. Now, when you generate the KEQ for an acid-base reaction, we no longer call it KEQ, if you remember. We call it the Ka of the acid, in this case, the acid HA. This would be HA, acid, dissociation constant, meaning that this ratio is a constant value. It only depends upon temperature. So if this is a constant, this means that this is something that we can look up in a textbook. In other words, all acids have a constant Ka at a certain temperature. So if that's the case, what do the Ka values tell us about a particular acid? Well, let's just say you have an acid right here, HA, and we put it in water. However, this particular reaction ends up being not very favorable it's more favored to go to the left than to the right, which means the products of this reaction, H3O plus and A, we wouldn't really see a lot of them or they wouldn't be in high concentration. Let's look at how the Ka would reflect this truth. Again, remember we're looking at products here over reactants. And in this particular case, what we have is not a high product concentration, but a high reactant concentration. That means you're basically taking a small number and dividing it by a bigger number. And of course, any fraction that's small divided by big gives you an overall low value. This would be a case for a very weak acid. Make sense of this. Notice the top reaction here. What we're basically saying is that when you put HA, that weak acid, in water, you don't get a lot of H3O+. Plus which means if HA doesn't deliver a lot of H3O+, plus, he's not that strong of an acid. Or we could also look at it as HA doesn't like to dissociate, which in turn means he doesn't like to give up his proton. That is also a sign of a very weak acid. So let's look at another situation here. Let's say we have another acid that we're putting in water here, but in this particular case, the reaction is very favored to go to the right, which means we get a lot of H3O plus and a lot of A minus. This in turn means our HA amount is going to be very small. Notice what this would do to the Ka value. In this case, we have more product concentration than we have reactant concentration. So of course, now we have a big number being divided by a smaller number, which means the Ka in this case is going to be high. This is how a relatively stronger acid would behave. And again, make the right connections here. We're basically saying that if this reaction is very favored, HA is going to dissociate, it's going to give up a proton, and make a lot of H3O+. Plus. Those are the hallmarks of a relatively stronger acid. Now, there's something else I want to show you here. 
Ka is not the only tool we have to judge relative strengths of acids. Sometimes it's more convenient to look at the pKa of the acid. And by definition, pKa is this. The pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka. So basically, p just means negative log of. But there's something very important that we should know about this equation right here. And that is, if you plug in a large Ka into this equation, it'll spit out a low pKa. So think about this. Let's pull this all together here for a second. That means if an acid has a higher Ka value, that means it's going to have a relatively lower pKa. And that in turn means it's going to be a relatively stronger acid. We should also know the reverse of this, which is basically the lower the Ka of an acid, the higher its pKa, and therefore the weaker the acid is. We're going to be using this a lot in organic chemistry, so please put this to memory. Now, there's another principle here I'd like to talk about. Let's say you have a typical acid-base reaction here. This is your acid. We saw in a previous online lecture that he turns into a conjugate base. And if this is the base, we've learned that he turns into his conjugate acid. Here's how we need to analyze our acid-base reactions. If the acid, let's say, has a low pKa, we know that means it's a relatively stronger acid. And what we need to know here is that a relatively strong acid always has a relatively weak conjugate base. And we should also know the reverse. That is simply, if you have an acid that happens to have a higher pKa value, that means it's a relatively weaker acid which makes his conjugate base relatively stronger. We're also going to be using this principle a lot in organic chemistry. It's going to help us determine whether or not a reaction will proceed, which we'll see in a later online lecture. Now, I'd like you to have a general idea of what it means to be strong or weak concerning acids. For instance, very strong acids have pKa values less than 1. Slightly strong acids, notice, have a pKa around 1 to 3, whereas weak acids officially are in between the 3 to 5 mark. Very weak acids, we're talking 5 to 15, and extremely weak acids have a pKa greater than 15. Now let's look at a sample problem here to put our skills to work here. Look at this. This says sample problem 1, given the pKa chart, Put the following bases in order of weakest to strongest. So there we have that chart. Remember, if Ka values are constant, then so are pKa values. Now, to answer this question, we need to convert our species in front of us here into acids. Because our chart doesn't list their particular pKa values, but if you notice, if we take the conjugate acid of each one of these, we can look them up on the chart. For instance, let's look at F minus. Converting him to his conjugate acid, we would get this, HF. To convert CH3 to his conjugate acid, that would give us CH4. Converting NH3 would get us to NH4 plus. And lastly, the H2PO3 would become H3PO3. Now notice, all these conjugate acids are on our chart. In fact, let's look up HF. Notice HF has a pKa of 3.2 according to the chart. CH4 has a pKa of 60. NH4 plus has a pKa of 9.4. And H3PO3 has a pKa of 2.1. Now here is where our principles get us to the answer. Out of all of these conjugate acids, notice it's the conjugate acid of H2PO3 that has the lowest pKa, which means the conjugate acid is the strongest acid out of all the conjugate acids. And remember, the stronger the acid, the weaker the base. So that means H2PO3 would be the weakest base. We would then look at the HF here. Why is that? Notice with a pKa of 3.2, He's technically the second strongest acid. 
which means the conjugate base of HF would be the second weakest base. We would then direct ourselves here to the NH3. Notice the NH4 plus would technically be the third strongest acid. Therefore, he'd be the third weakest base. And lastly, the CH4 has a pKa of 60, which makes CH4 the weakest acid. Therefore, his conjugate base, CH3 plus, would be the strongest base. So this is our answer. We're going to be using this skill often in organic chemistry. So what have we learned here? Key points. Number one, we saw the higher the Ka, the stronger the acid. The lower the Ka, the weaker the acid. We also saw two, the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. The higher the pKa, the weaker the acid. And we saw three, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. And the weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base.